Wer rettet die Welt? Der Ö1-Festival-Podcast zur Klimabiennale Wien. Welcome to the podcast on the first Vienna Klimabiennale. Over the past few weeks, we've reported on various items from the program of the festival for a sustainable and livable future. For the end of this year's Klimabiennale, we'll visit an exhibition at the Kunsthalle in Vienna's Museumsquartier. The exhibition was created in cooperation with the Wiener Festwochen and the Klimabiennale. Genossin Sonne is the title. And this is what the sun sounds like. The audio was released by the space agency NASA a few years ago. It was not initially foreseeable that the sun, the most important star in our galaxy, would also become the focus of the collaborative exhibition at the Vienna Kunsthalle. What was certain, however, was that the exhibition would revolve around the theme of revolutions. Milo Rau, the new director of the Wiener Festwochen, initially approached us with the idea of an exhibition about the revolution. And above all, it was to play a specific role in the ecology of the Vienna Festival. It was supposed to be a bit of an archive of political movements. Explains curator Andrea Popelka. Together with assistant curator Hannah Marinissen, she guides us through the exhibition. And it was through Rau that we came into contact with Inke Arns. She's the director of the Dortmund Hardware Medienkunstverein. She's a very experienced curator who Rau has often worked with. And Hannah and I then teamed up with Inke. And then we developed a different project to the one Milo outlined at the beginning. And somehow the sun fell into our laps. It was really like an inspiration. And the cooperation with the Klima Biennale came about through the figure of the sun, so to speak. Subsequently, attempts were made to take up the theme of revolutions and link it to the influence of the sun, an interplay between nature and man. And if we now assume that revolutions are events where we refer to them in general, so to speak, where we take on the forces that we exert all the time, or perhaps exert almost blindly without realizing what we're doing, including how we shape history, and that our influence on the climate, which we are now becoming aware of, also falls into this. So I'm also referring here to a philosopher, Eva van Riedeke, who says, OK, if we think revolution today, then that must always include the fact that we are also changing the ecology of our relationship with nature, so to speak. The title of the exhibition, Genossin Sonne, goes one step further, says Andrea Popelka. It anthropomorphizes the sun to a certain extent. In other words, humanizes it. But I think it's somehow also an affectionate title, Genossin Sonne. So we also discuss that it's somehow important that it's feminine. And somehow, I think, from the sound of it, you get the feeling, OK, that's the sun, so to speak. She's a figure that stands by our side in processes of change and that also has something friendly about it. And Milo Rau originally wanted to have a specific understanding of revolution as this one subversive event, the coup d'etat or or somehow also civil war-like conditions, etc. He wanted us to move away from this understanding. He wanted us to start from this understanding and then look into history, so to speak, to see what can be found there. The curatorial team then developed this idea further. They didn't just want to depict revolutions that had gone into the archives, says Andrea Popelka. It was much more important to her to shed light on struggles that had not been historicized and to rethink the concept of revolution. And somehow we thought we are also in the field of art, and it might be cool to find an imaginative, poetic approach to the sun. In front of the main room of the exhibition is a giant graph. It is the work of Mikhail Gorbanev. During the coronavirus pandemic, the International Monetary Fund economist wrote an article to illustrate the connection between economic and social events and the solar cycle. This is a rather absurd author who also brought us in, who is somehow active in the economy and who refers to the Russian cosmos. Of course, this was also a very diverse group of people, some of whom, and one person in particular, have developed the thesis that activity on the sun and solar storms affect political movements on Earth. 
views that are not shared in the Kunsthalle, but which nevertheless illustrate how differently the connection between the sun and social change is interpreted. Mikhail Gorbanov has now illustrated his rather questionable theory in a graph in relation to cosmists. Where you can see a graph that shows when there was particularly strong solar activity and then says, ah, OK, but there was also the Paris Commune or the revolution in Haiti, so it didn't actually include them, which is a shame. And that's also a problem I have with this graphic, because the Haitian Revolution, for example, which was immensely important, is often not remembered. And it doesn't appear in the graphic either. And the French Revolution is included. I think that's also a problem, so to speak, that this two-dimensional categorization brings with it. Once you leave this display behind you, the large exhibition space opens up. A windowless cuboid with orange walls in which several screens are arranged at different heights and angles. The so-called diorama was designed by Marlene Oeken and Martha Schwindling. They referred to various things, but also to science fiction graphics from the 70s and 80s, where you also see an orange-red sky. And then you see different planets and other suns and some futuristic architecture. But here you have decided to leave this horizon and this sky undefined. In other words, we only have the orange color on the wall and the idea was that it would be a kind of projection surface that could be inserted by the imagination of the visitors themselves. And then we also have this furniture here, which runs along the wall, and the films that we have just found work opposite it. And we also found that interesting because it plays a little with this dimensionality, so to speak, and because the view of the visitors in side also tends to go upwards towards the sky, from which the Sonja Leimer space chunks have just fallen. Space chunks, the work of artist Sonja Leimer, deals with the space debris that is created, among other things, by the many satellites in space. These are sculptures that look like a torn, bent sheet of steel. Some of them are pitted and, as the title says, space chunks, they are based on space debris. And I think it's somehow quite nice from a curatorial point of view that you have a bit of a feeling as if these pieces have virtually crashed and are lying here in the exhibition space. In the middle of the room is another work of art by Sonja Leimer. It is a screen print depicting the sun at close range. The title of the print is 24-12-2024. Hannah Marinissen, assistant curator, explains why. In 2021, NASA sent out a satellite, and on December 24th of this year, it's supposed to go to the lowest point of the sun's corona. The corona of the sun mentioned by Hannah Marinissen is part of the solar atmosphere. And it's a very abstract photo, so it was specially printed for the exhibition. There are others where this material is also a heat-resistant, reflective material that's actually used in space travel. So you could see it even better there. But here you can see these drivers, or these beams, so to speak, that are somehow driving around in a hectic manner. And again, this question of what kind of image do we have of the sun, how it can be represented. Says Andrea Popelka. The artist Sonja Leimer also sees screen printing as a symbol of the resilience of humanity, adds Hannah Marinissen, a poetic approach that runs through the exhibition. For example, in the video works of the Mexican group Colectivo Los Ingravidos. Their video works incorporate both poetic and political aspects. They were also formed in Mexico at a time of political uprisings and above all with the intention of countering the state media and somehow have a fairly broad catalogue of films. And I find the films very beautiful because they're often shot with an analogue handheld camera and they layer different images on top of each other with different colours. And for me, it somehow has something of the -the will-o'-the-wisp of a dance or a fire. And the sound is always very important. It's very rhythmic. (laughs) 
in its works, the Colectivo Los Ingravidos refers to specific grievances in Mexico, but also repeatedly delves into Aztec history or cosmology, among other things. Incidentally, the music accompanying the installations can be heard via headphones, which you receive at the beginning of the exhibition. And it's precisely through this superimposition of images that different contemporary realities are superimposed or historical continuities become visible, as well as the continuity of grievances. A continuity that is also a connecting element between the revolutions depicted, such as Colectivo Los Ingravidos and the Sun. The last work in the exhibition shows a huge image of the sun on a grey background. We are standing in front of the work looking at the sun at midnight, and this is an animation made from 200,000 satellite images. Images that come from NASA and they're open source, that's why we were able to use them to promote our exhibition. And in the field of art, we found this question interesting, which we've already addressed with Sonja Leimer, namely the representation of the sun, which is also this incommensurable giant thing around which our entire solar system, as the name suggests, revolves. And at the same time, it's probably one of the most common motives that has been depicted so much by different cultures and artists. And we also thought it was important for this projection to have something monumental about it, and also that it's emblazoned on the wall at the end of the exhibition in a somewhat threatening way, and that the mass of the sun and this elusive thing is thematized here once again. You've been listening to Wer rettet die Welt? Der Ö1 Festival Podcast zur Klimabiennale Wien. Created by Till Köppel and spoken by Julie McCarthy and Tom Midler.